And Richard Southern joins us again. Rich, Mount Rushmore we're talking about today. Beautiful landscape, iconic of course. Though if one U.S. governor has her way, there could be another president added to the mountaintop. Now my question is, is there enough room to fit the inflated ego? <laughs> ah, very good, Adrian. I can't wait to read the YouTube comments on that one, Adrian. That'll be fun. Uh, but did you catch this over the weekend? Uh, the New York, New York Times said the White House had apparently asked South Dakota's governor if maybe they could get Trump's face on that iconic monument. Trump denied it in a tweet wow. but said, hey, I think that's actually a pretty, pretty good idea, he said. <laughs> Surprising he'd think it would be a good idea. Yeah, I know. Surprising to hear that. But no, despite whether he wants it or not, experts say it's not possible to carve a fifth president's face. There's not enough usable space. You know, uh, there is space next to Washington, but they say that's where they wanted to put Jefferson initially, and the rock just isn't stable enough. It It is possible to repurpose a face, though, and I actually have a bit of sway down with the governor there myself. I had to put... <laughs> what do you think, so, Adrian? Is so that you can, work? So you can fit inflated egos there. Perfect. You know, I mean, it's just like, oh my God, I know that guy from TV. I have to try another one out too. Take a look at this. That, that, now that's a good looking. That's that's an that's an upgrade. You know, the trouble was though, the stonemasons they worked day and night trying to get the hair right on that one. It was very difficult. Very you know. difficult indeed. Very difficult indeed. <laughs> that was fun, Richard. Thanks for that. Now we all wear masks, especially in public places. Very important. But just how effective? Are certain ones I think this is something lots of people have thought about as they've purchased one online or made one at yeah. home there's a new study that you're looking at that's tested a bunch of the face coverings yeah Duke University down in the States they looked at which ones are effective just for you know like every day um, you know when you're talking to someone you don't want the you know the uh, at, the respiratory droplets to be spread around they said without question the best performing mask is an n95 mask adrian of course yeah. this is the one of course used by healthcare professionals right yeah not the most comfortable no but they not say that's that the best. people but, you know, should really be walking around wearing as well because they're needed in the hospitals right that's right but they say the other good performers are you know the three layer disposable surgical mask and the cotton mask which you can make at home and reuse those were very good the study said okay uh, the good worst performers though adrian yeah bandanas no good and knitted face coverings they may look pretty cool the bandanas mm -hmm. they're not very good though and they said the overall worst performers was the neck fleece this is something worn by like runners and bikers they said that doesn't do a very good job at all which one are you wearing adrian i've been i need to up my mask game to be honest with you i've got like the the, the surgical ones the little blue surgical ones i've bought several boxes of those uh our company as well as as handed out some masks they're, they're pretty solid as well so i've been kind of going back and forth between those but i could probably up my mask game just a little bit rich Pretty cool. We did a story a while ago where you could print out your face and they print the face on the mask so it looked like your entire face even when you had a mask on. Pre people are getting pretty creative with it. You got a few of those? I, I'm thinking of getting one. Maybe I'll get a Mount Rushmore one or yeah, something. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, moving it along, one lucky person will have to wait a little longer to get the massive 50 50 jackpot in Edmonton. Yeah. Have you heard about this out in Edmonton? Uh, do tell. The Edmonton Oilers, their 50-50 draw is up to $15 million, Adrian. Ooh. Yeah, um, it's a victim of its own success, though. Like, there are so many people trying to buy tickets that they had duplicate tickets and missing tickets and all this. So they're trying to get it straightened out, and they said it might be a few more days before they can do the raffle. But that's the highest amount ever for any sports team. Meantime, here in Toronto, the Blue Jays' 50-50 draw is at a record for any MLB team. And as you can see, above half a million dollars. You have until midnight if you live here in the province of Ontario to log on wow. and buy a ticket. I am getting you know what I bought, action. though? I didn't buy a ticket, but Adrian, I spent 60 of my hard-earned dollars to get my cardboard cutout in Buffalo for the Blue Jays' home games tomorrow. Oh, so you, you can... might see, never mind Mount Rushmore, you might actually see me in Buffalo tomorrow. Are you, do you know where your seat is? They didn't tell you, so I have to, I guess if you're not right behind the plate, you're probably not going to get on TV, but we'll see tomorrow what happens with that age. We will. I'll be looking for you, Rich. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Cheers.